Welcome back everybody to another video lecture from Mrs. Simino. Today we're going to be talking about the mole and this slideshow is going to be divided into several parts and today is part one where we're going to introduce the mole and mole conversions. Before we get started into what a mole is and those calculations, we just want to do a quick review about atomic mass. I'm hoping that you remember that you can find the atomic mass of an element on the periodic table. It's going to be that decimal number that's underneath the symbol on the periodic table. And basically what it tells you is um, the how many protons, neutrons each one has. And remember that decimal number, though, is the average atomic mass. So if we were to look at hydrogen, for example, we would see that it only has one proton, so it's going to have one AMU. Helium, on the other hand, has two protons and two neutrons, so it's going to have four AMUs. So what we're going to do is now that we can describe the mass of an individual atom, we're going to look how we can find the mass of a molecule or a compound. So in our example here, to find the formula mass or the mass of the chemical formula, um, what we're going to do is we're going to sum the atomic masses of all the atoms in the compound. So our first example here is going to be water. We know that water has two hydrogens because we have this little two coefficient here. So we're going to say we have two atoms of hydrogen. We just said on the last slide that um, hydrogen has a value of one AMU. And then we can see that it only has one oxygen here because there's no other uh, subscript here. So it's just going to be assumed to be a one. And we can look on the periodic table and see that the value for oxygen is 15.99. We would go ahead and round that to the tenths place. And so we're going to come up with the hydrogens are going to be two AMUs. The oxygens are going to, the oxygen is going to be 16 AMUs, and then when we total that up, we're going to get 18 AMUs. So we can say that an individual water molecule has a mass of 18.0 AMUs. Another example of how to find the formula mass is uh, by looking at acetic acid, which is also known as vinegar. So to find the formula mass for uh, vinegar, we would say that it has four hydrogens. So we've got this one here, and then we've got these three here. So this we're coming up with four times its um, AMUs, its mass. We have two carbons times its 12 AMUs. And then we have the two oxygens here, when we already said that was 16 AMUs. So when we add it up, we're going to see that acetic acid has a formula mass of 16 AMUs. My bad, 60 AMUs. So an AMU value is a lot, lot, lot smaller than the mass of a gram, which is what we can actually measure in a classroom. So our balances all measure things in grams. So it's not very practical for us to measure in terms of AMUs. So scientists came up with a way that we can count the number of atoms using the equipment that we have in our general science labs and classes. And what they came up with was this idea of a mole. It was found that the number of atoms of an element whose mass in the grams is equal to the atomic mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. This number, okay, or this amount of atoms is called a mole. The mole is a counting unit, so just like a dozen. If I was to send you to the store for a dozen eggs, you would bring me home 12. If I send to the store for a mole of eggs, you're going to bring me home a lot of eggs, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. So here there's just a little bit of history about the mole, but really the big idea here is you should just know if I say you have a mole of something, if I have one mole of pencils, I'm going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pencils. So the same thing, if I have a mole of carbon atoms, I'm going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. So when we see the mole abbreviated, I think it's kind of weird, but the abbreviation literally is just M-O-L. Like they dropped the E like it was that much trouble to write that E on there. And this is known as the SI unit for measuring the amount of a pure substance. Um, and here it's just kind of funny. It says the mole is the chemist six pack or dozen. Many objects in our everyday lives come in similar counting units. So if I said, hey, I need a ream of paper, which I do, by the way, so bring one in, that's going to be 500 sheets of paper. Or if we use the term pair, that means you have two socks. 
So this six, number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is known as a mole, but it's also given the name of Avogadro's number, and that's because he was a physicist that is credited with coming up with this number. Okay, so this is kind of a hard concept for kids to get their brain around. Is It says, while the number of items in a mole of a substance is always the same, the mass of, the, of that mole is going to vary. So a second ago, I said if I had a mole of pencils, okay, it would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pencils, okay? If I had a mole of, like, let's say elephants, it would be 6.02. 0, 02 times 10 to the 23rd elements. It's the same number of pencils and the same number of element or elephants. But if I was to weigh how much does my mole of pencils weigh and then how much does my mole of elephants weigh, hopefully you can see that my elephants would have a larger mass than the pencils even though there's the same number of items present, okay? So when we calculate the molar mass of something, it is the mass in grams of one mole of that substance, and this is given a special name of the molar mass. And like I said, the molar mass is going to depend on the masses of the particles that make up a substance. Um, and it is the same as the atomic mass, except for we're going to give it a gram value now. Instead of using AMU, we're going to use grams instead, because that's something that we can actually measure in the classroom. Okay, so I just gave you that pencil and elephant example, right? Obviously, each individual pencil is a lot lighter than an elephant, but the same thing goes with different substances that we have. So if we look at all of these, you can see that if I have a mole of any of them, this value is exactly the same. However, the molar mass or the mass of one mole of the atoms is going to be different. So copper, if you look on the periodic table, it should have a average atomic mass of 63.5 AMUs. But the cool thing here is we're saying we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, not just one atom. So we're going to change that unit from AMUs to grams. Then we can go ahead and we can look at, for example, a water molecule here. Okay, if I have a mole of water molecules, it's still going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But notice we're going to go from 18 AMUs for just one individual molecule to if we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, we're then going to make it into grams because we're not just talking about one molecule now. If we're talking about molar mass, we're talking about the one mole of the substance. So moles are super important in chemistry because it can help us convert things. It can help us go from the number of particles to the mass of those particles, and we'll see how those conversions work. So you are going to love this chart. In fact, you should have it on the back of your periodic table. So I sometimes will refer to this as the mole roadmap because it'll help us figure out how to get from one unit to the next unit. So we can see to go from particles to mass, we're going to have to convert it into moles first. And so it tells us, you know, if we're going from here to here, we're going to use our mole number. And if we are going to go from here to here, we're going to have to use the molar mass from that periodic table. So let's say you're doing a reaction and you find that you need 3.20 moles of zinc to make this reaction happen. Well, moles, remember, is a counting unit, so it's telling you how many particles you actually need. But you can't exactly count out atoms of zinc, right? So what you can do, though, is you can mass out a certain amount of zinc to get that number of moles. So the way that we would set up this problem is we would take our given, which is going to be our 3.2 moles, we would use the molar mass of zinc, so this number 65.4 you can find on the periodic table, and we're going to put it over one mole. Remember, we're going to need these units to cancel out to give us the number of grams we need. So since this value is on the top, ooh, I don't know why I did that, and this number is on the top, you're just going to multiply to get this value. So remember, this thing right here is saying that one mole of the substance is equal to this many grams of it. Now you could be asked to go from particles to moles. That was like the first um, 
thing on the mole roadmap to go from particles to moles. But before we talk about this calculation, I just want to mention this term here, formula unit. Formula unit is like saying like a molecule for covalent compounds, but for ionic compounds. So we really wouldn't call NaCl a molecule because it's an ionic compound. Remember, we saved that for um, when you're sharing electrons. So we could call it a formula unit since we're talking about calcium carbonate. This is obviously an ionic compound. Okay. Okay, but then, so the way this works is here is our given. We're going to go ahead and write our given here. And then we're going to use that conversion factor our mole roadmap told us to use. We're going to need to figure out if I have this many particles, okay, how many moles is this going to be? So I'm just going to put my moles on the top, my number of formula units on the bottom. And then since this is on the top, this is on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and divide to get this answer over here. Now kind of a side funny joke. Notice we wrote FU here. That stands for formula unit, and it's probably the only time in class you'll be able to write FU and not get in trouble on your papers. Now, sometimes you're going to need multiple conversion factors to help you get from one thing to the other. So in this example, we're going to have 250 grams of table sugar or sucrose, and we need to know how many molecules that'll be. So you'll go ahead and start off with your given over here. So that's 250 grams. Just like we saw in our mole roadmap, we're going to have to convert to moles first. So we're going to put the mole on the top. This is the molar mass of our sucrose up here. Notice these grams are canceling out, and then on the top here we're in moles, but that's not what we're looking for. We're actually looking for how many molecules are there. So in order to go from moles to molecules, you need to use Avogadro's number. Okay, so you're going to just take your value here, multiply it by 6.02, and you're going to come out with 4.40 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, something else that's like super awesome about the mole is that if you talk about any mole of gas, it is going to occupy the same volume. So here it says another generality about the mole is that with matter in the gas phase, we can develop another equality. Under the same conditions, equal volumes of gases contain equal number of particles. So one mole of gas will occupy the same volume as one mole of any other gas under the same conditions. And the volume that it would occupy is 22.4 liters. So it doesn't matter what type of gas, given one mole of the gas, it will occupy the same space. Really cool. So now here's our completed uh, mole roadmap, or at least our, our first one we're going to look at. So see, we can go from particles to moles, and then from moles to mass, okay? You might, for example, be given particles, and so you have to go from moles if you're looking for volume. You might be starting off in mass and ask for moles and then have to convert it into liters. So you can just use this as a way that you can figure out, make a prediction about what conversion factors you should use in your problems. Okay, so here is our last example using the liters now. So say you were given two liter flask of carbon dioxide. It's at standard temperature and pressure. How many moles of gas are gonna be in this flask? Well, here's your liters. We know that one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. We're going to put the liters on the bottom. That way the units can cancel out. Just multiply and then divide down here, and we're going to come out with 0 0.089 moles of carbon dioxide in that flask. We're definitely going to be spending some time in class going over these practice problems. Hopefully you've written them down. That way you can refer to them when we're doing our worksheets. See you in the next video.